when I was a senior, I had to make a, a decision in those days. You didn't just come and get to, into general college, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I thought I had the grandfather and an uncle and aunt who were in journalism, and so well, I would just sign up for journalism. I had a double major of English and journalism mm -hmm. in the College of Education because my parents thought that if I was going to go to the university, I needed to come out of there with a possible uh, useful uh, way to make a living. I think it was $288. May, I'm not sure if that was for a year, maybe. It was just hardly anything. My first day at UNM, um, I was moving into Marin Hall as a freshman, and I had my big trunk all with my, all my clothes in it, and Mother and Dad were going to bring me down. But at the sawmill, there was this great crisis, and they couldn't come. So I had to be driven by um, on a lumber truck with the <laughs> truck driver in my big trunk, and I was so embarrassed to pull up at Marin Hall and <laughs> with the truck driver. <laughs> and at that time, there was not uh, that journalism building. There, we were in a barracks over to the south of Bandelier Hall, and I believe that the journalism department started a year before that in 1946. And then the following year, they built what is now the present location of the journalism building. And the presses were downstairs. And uh, for the Lobo, uh, we would have to go down, uh, whoever was night editor would go down and uh, uh, work with the printer. And it was hot type and make sure that everything was correct. And, uh, that was kind of, I always liked doing that editing. That was one of my favorite things to do. Many of my classes were in Mitchell Hall or what was the ad building at that time. And they were on either side of the sub. Now the sub, of course, was a very important place to, uh, to know about and to hang out. Uh, I had a class in uh, Hodgen Hall which is now, of course, the alum uh, building, uh, but uh, the creaky old staircase. And of course, that is a, an original building from the university, and it was a brick building many years ago. I remember as a journalism student going up to the legislature, talking to the politicians, and being given a card by Diamond Tooth Miller, on, who said he was the best senator money could buy. In the early days, they, there were so few of us in our, I guess, my sophomore class. And I mostly can remember all of them. And we had a, started a journalism sorority. I was in that journalism group, which was Theta Sigma Phi, and then became Women in Communications. One half semester, we girls decided we didn't want to eat in the dining hall. So we got slips from our doctors that we needed special food and we had to eat out. <laughs> Good doctor, Lee. It was very different from now. We had house mothers and on weeknights we had to be in at 10 o'clock and uh, on weekends we could stay out till 12. And if you weren't in at that time, well, you were a uh, campus and you have to stay in the following weekend. There were people who uh, came from all oh, maybe prep schools in the east and from the west and everything. It seemed like it was just a homogeneous sort of a group of people. As I started there in 49, there were a good many fellows, mostly men, coming back from war. So there were a good number of of the, the male uh, student body were a little older as a result. There were some Hispanic students, some who had come back from the war. Um, Vicente Jimenez, I believe, was in some of my classes, and I think, yeah, he became quite prominent. In a sense, Albuquerque had a, an advantage here in New Mexico because we've had less strident divisions of like in the deep south, the black and white uh, was was a more um, 
harsher division there, perhaps, the Jim Crow laws, all that sort of thing. Now, I think there was a lot of discrimination here that was uh, unrecognized by any of the people who weren't victims of it. There were a lot of instances, I think, where youngsters were not allowed to speak anything but English when they came to school, and they may not have had anything of English prior to coming to school. And so there was discrimination. It wasn't as open, it, or it wasn't uh, publicized, it wasn't brought to the consciousness of uh, the general public as much. It was, it was hidden. <laughs>